Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Good morning, Allisonville Christian Church, and welcome to all our visitors. Here are the announcements for the week of September 27, 2020. Starting today at 4 p.m. and this Wednesday at 10 a.m., we convene two groups to discuss the book, The Art of Neighboring, Building Genuine Relationships Right Outside Your Door, by Jay Pothak and Dave Runyon. It's available for purchase online, and a study guide is included in the back of the book. You can find all the information needed to join in this week's newsletter. The Life Class continues to meet at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings for an hour. We will be discussing what kinds of things Christians should consider in responding to the issues surrounding climate change. How does our theology of stewardship inform how we think about the earth, the environment, and our role in being God's representatives here and now? We'll be discussing these questions with an eye toward some actions that we as individuals and as a congregation can take. Use the meeting information on the screen to join, or you can find them on the ACC Facebook group page. In-person youth groups for middle and high schoolers is back. Cairo, grades 6 through 8, will meet from 4 to 6 p.m., and CYF, grades 9 through 12, will meet from 6 to 8 p.m. this Sunday. Both groups will gather outside in the backyard fire pit area and will meet outdoors wearing masks and keeping socially distanced. Please contact Pastor Doug for more information. The month of October will bring with it our stewardship campaign for 2021, Faithful, Hopeful, Loving. The practice of exercising financial stewardship is a spiritual discipline and a way to grow our faith. There is joy in practicing generosity, and it begins with a simple step of making a commitment to contribute. There is always something happening in our community and behind the scenes, and many ways to remain active participants in living God's love out loud. Be sure to keep an eye on our weekly newsletter for the latest information, and you can also find more at Allisonville's Facebook page or visit our website at allisonville.org. of God, arise, awake. The time has come to worship our God, which calls each of us by name, to continue acting justly, to continue loving mercy, to continue walking with humility, and in all things, finding God's love wherever we may be. So come, let us worship our God together.
successive journeys run. His love shall spread from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. People and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song, and infant voices shall Things are Good morning, friends. I hope you all are doing really well this morning. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the word reconciliation. Do you remember that word? We've talked about it before. But reconciliation, what is that? Well, reconciliation, it happens when somebody says, I'm sorry. And then somebody else says, I forgive you. And then they both work together to find a new way forward, maybe a new way to be friends, a new way to work together, a new way to be good neighbors, um, all sorts of things like that. And this is a Reconciliation Sunday. So it's a really important day to talk about this important work of reconciliation. Can you try saying that word at home? Reconciliation. I hear you. It's great. So I thought that we might practice some parts of reconciliation this morning because it's really important. So let's first practice by saying we're sorry because sometimes we hurt people's feelings or we hurt them and maybe we don't mean to and we're not trying to, but we still end up making mistakes and hurting people sometimes anyway. So it's important to say we're sorry when somebody says you really hurt me right? So let's practice that. So find somebody in your house and just say, I'm sorry, practice saying those words. I'm sorry. Are you doing it? Okay, good. So now let's practice also saying, I forgive you, right? Because that's another important part of reconciliation is saying, as forgiving people, right? Is saying sorry and meaning it and then forgiving people and meaning that too. So let's um, talk to the people in our house and you and say, I forgive you. Practice saying that. I forgive you. I forgive you. Great. And of course, it's harder to practice finding a new way forward because you need another partner to do that, right? And you need to work together to find new ways to be in relationship, to be good friends, and to work together moving forward. But I'm really glad we got to practice those two parts today. And I'm really glad, too, that God is with us through all of that, right? We're going to make mistakes sometimes, and sometimes other people are going to hurt us, but... If we practice reconciliation, we listen to God, we follow um, Jesus and follow the ways that he taught us, then we can really get some cool things done and, and make a big difference in the world. So let's pray together. God, thank you so much for your gift of reconciliation. 
help us to practice reconciliation to bring peace and justice here on earth. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy Sunday. Good morning. As we enter a time of prayer, I invite you to just take a moment first, get comfortable wherever you are, close your eyes if you'd like, and take in a deep breath. It is good to remember that wherever we are physically, spiritually, mentally, each morning, including this morning, and in every moment, God meets us where we are. As we pray this morning, we give God thanks for the week of vacation and respite Pastor Diane has had. She is returning home now, and we give God thanks for Diane and for Rick's ministry to Allisonville Christian Church and to the Christian Church in Indiana. And we pray that they will come back feeling restored and renewed and ready to continue in God's work that God has called each of them to. Among our concerns, we lift up several this morning. We remember Andy Holtzman, Jim and Carol Holtzman's son, who is being hospitalized. We remember Andy and pray for his strength to return and for Jim and Carol and for all of their family right now. We pray for Paul Ayers, who is recovering from a surgery he had this week. And we continue to pray for Ali Reyes, for Mary Caress, Mike McDonald, Louise Liggett, Bev and Davis Goforth. We remember all those who are affected by COVID-19, and we pray for all of the healthcare professionals who are still on the front line, still doing everything they can to ensure that those who need help will get it and that we can continue to move forward as a society uh, as we seek to find the next right steps in this ongoing pandemic. We also continue to pray for all those who are victims of racism, systemic racism. We pray for justice and for hearts to transform, that God will continue to connect humans, to connect us with one another, and that we may continue to combat the sin of white supremacy and racism in all of its ugly forms in our world. We lift up our global ministry partners this morning in Fiji. I'll offer a pastoral prayer and after invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer using sins. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, steadfast God, we come before you again this morning with much on our minds and in our hearts ready to hear your word speak to us, speak to our lives, speak to our community, speak to our world. We give you thanks for this world, for the community of people and the web of creation which you have spun and continue to create, designed to sustain all that you have created calling each one beloved, each plant and each rock and each mountain and every human being which you have made with joy. We give you thanks for that joy, God. And we pause and we remember those this morning who are in need of healing, in need of healing of their spirit, of their body, of their mind, those of us who are in need of healing about which we are not even aware yet. You come to us in the form of the Christ who heals in so many ways. 
So we lift to you our siblings who we've named and those who have gone unnamed, that you would continue working through each of us to be agents of healing and grace to all who come our way, and that we may find your love that you give to us anew, afresh, holding all that we are and all that you call us to be. Empower us, O oh God, that on our hard days especially, and on every day, we remember your call to love justice, to do mercy, and to walk with humility. And together we pray the prayer your Son has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. from the lectionary today comes to us from the letter to the Philippians, beginning with chapter 2, verse 1. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing for selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each one of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you to both will and to work for his good pleasure. Thus ends the reading of the day. Today's passage is built around one of the earliest Christian hymns ever written. We don't know who wrote it or exactly when, though it was sometime after the resurrection and before Paul started writing letters to churches in the early 50s. It appears that the hymn was originally written in Aramaic, in Jesus' own language, rather than in Greek, because it has some of the earmarks of Hebrew poetry, things like parallelism, where the poet offers the same thought twice in a slightly different wording. That was a technique held over from the time when everything was passed down orally rather than through the written word. It was a good way of helping people remember key points. We don't know the tune, but even reading this ancient hymn connects us to those very early Christian siblings, drawing us closer to them. The Apostle Paul uses the hymn here in Philippians as the linchpin for some pastoral advice he is offering to the church at Philippi. And all these many years later, it is still very good advice for all who are a part of Christ's church on earth. For any who wish to pattern their thinking, their living on the mind of Christ. This isn't the first time I've wished we could go back and see what was going on this time in First Christian Church of Philippi. What was happening that led Paul to tell them to be of one mind? Why is it that he speaks of humility and unity throughout this whole section of the letter? We know that from the beginning, church folk have found things to disagree about. From deeply held theological viewpoints, to politics, to social issues, to what kind of flooring to put down in the fellowship hall, or what color to paint the kitchen. In case you're wondering, as far as I know, neither of those last two things have been big issues at ACC. Whatever the issues were for the Philippians, Paul tells them, that to be of one accord, they must pattern themselves after Jesus. They must be like Jesus. Over the last several months in worship, we have read together a good portion of the Gospel of Matthew. And we've seen that being like Jesus is a tall order. The parables and stories we've read have taught us that Jesus doesn't think like we do most of the time. He does not count right and wrong as we do. Jesus clearly thinks we should be more forgiving than we are inclined to be, and he doesn't look at others or at the world through the same lens we often use. Leaving Matthew and turning today to Paul didn't really offer us a big change, though. Paul not only says, let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, but he also fleshes out what that means, even repeating himself a couple of times in ways that leave no loopholes, lest we were thinking we could maybe slide by with a nod of the head. Mm -hmm, that's right, be of the same mind as Jesus. He wrote, you all be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. Hear that repetition? Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Don't look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? Not easy, but familiar. Like some of the same things Jesus has been saying throughout the Gospel of Matthew. Church, we are called to live in true communion with one another, sharing life, getting to really know each other, caring for each other, 
putting the other first, learning to pattern our minds and our lives after Christ one moment, one day at a time. After his opening statement, Paul pauses with his advice and says, here, let's sing it. How I wish I could hear that. It's highly possible that the church in Philippi knew this hymn. Maybe they sang it every Sunday like we've often done with the doxology. Perhaps they sang it week after week without thinking too much about the words anymore. So here Paul wrote it out for them to read to one another. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Here is the pattern for thinking and living. Empty yourselves, humble yourselves like Jesus. You know who I always think of when I read this passage? Jimmy Carter, former president, statesman, philanthropist, human rights activist and protector, the list goes on. And he is also a true Christian, his faith guiding everything he does. It is his pattern for thinking and living. He's also a longtime Sunday school teacher. I'm not sure what's been happening at the Maranatha Baptist Church in Plains, Georgia during this pandemic, but for years before that, Jimmy Carter has taught a Sunday school class there at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning that he was in town. Rick had the opportunity to attend the class a few years ago, and he came home in awe of President Carter's prowess as a Bible teacher. Other than having a very famous member and Sunday school teacher, Maranatha Church is like every other church. Their worship bulletin features, as does ours in usual times, a list of people who are serving in all the various jobs for the week. Maranatha Baptist, though, goes one step farther than we do. Some years ago, I saw one of their bulletins that included some jobs outside worship. That week it said, this week, the church will be cleaned by Rosalind Carter and the grass will be mowed by Jimmy Carter. The former president of the United States, the former first lady, mowed the grass and ran the sweeper at their church when it was their turn. Put on the mind of Christ, Paul wrote. Empty yourself for others. Humble yourself before others. Be obedient in all that God commands. Paul knew that wasn't easy. He was in prison, after all, when he wrote those words. So after the hymn, he added a little more advice. He said, Therefore, my beloved, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. That understood you and work out your own salvation is plural, by the way. He was saying, you all work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out together. Put on the mind of Christ together. Follow this pattern of thinking and living together. Be of one mind in Christ and work it out together, even as God continues to work in you all, enabling you all to want to do this and to work for God's good pleasure. Can you think of a better way to spend a lifetime? I can't either. Each other's way. 
is done with justice and with praise. Oh, for a world where goods are shared and misery relieved, where truth is spoken, children spared, equality achieved. We welcome one world family and struggle with each choice that opens us to unity and gives our vision voice. The poor are rich, the weak are strong, the foolish ones are wise. Tell all who mourn, outcasts we long, who perishes will rise. Oh, for a world preparing for God's glorious reign of peace, where time and tears will be no more, and all but love will cease. Dear friends, next Sunday we begin four weeks of focusing on our stewardship. It's this year, the theme is Faithful, Hopeful, Loving, which seems pretty perfect for this moment when it's a little hard to plan, right? We're not sure what will happen as the next year unfolds, but we do know that God continues to call us to ministry together. And so we're having faith that we will be able to provide for next year's ministries and then some. We certainly are hopeful that we will all be able to share in the offering as we usually do. And we will be able to continue to love in the way God calls us to love. So I'm mentioning it this week because I want to invite you all to start praying with me that God will show us what ministries we need to be doing for next year and that God will enable us to underwrite those. Today, we give thanks for all of the offerings that we each bring, and we pray God's blessing on them. Let us pray. Great and gracious one, we do ask your blessing on all that we give, on our financial offerings, on the offerings of our lives, our time, our talents, our energy. And we ask that you will bless each gift that it will do the work that you call it to do in the world. In Christ's name, amen. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples at the table how he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you, take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. So drink of it, all of you. Receive these good gifts of God, for you are God's own. The living Christ is the host of this table, and he invites us all to come. Let us offer our thanks. Great and gracious God, we give you thanks that the living Christ does invite us all to come again and again 
to this table, to this table of sustenance and love and hope and faith. So feed us now, we pray, with this bread and this cup, that we might truly be your people in the world, called to be Christ in the world. It is in his name that we live and we pray. Amen. Let us share the meal. Amen.
you have been considering becoming an official part of Allisonville Christian Church, we invite you to contact either Pastor Doug or me to talk about that. We will be glad to welcome you by transfer of membership or by confession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord, if you have never made that confession before. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us know who we are, beloved ones of God, chosen and sent into the world to be love and grace overflowing. May it be so in all of our interactions every day, everywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of God's Holy Spirit, it may be so. Let us all say amen, amen.